Hiya, welcome back. This is nearly the final. There'll be um, this video here, uh, moving the beer from the fermentation bucket into the pressure barrel. Um, I went for the pressure, pressure barrel method because I thought it'd be easier than putting beer into a load of little bottles. So with the pressure barrel, um, I'm going to sterilise this with the Young Sterilisement Cleaner. Bit of warm water, a couple of pints, some of this powder mixed up. Give it a shake. I'm also going to stuff the, the siphon tube in there with it as well, so that gets sterilised. Um, I'm using the pressure barrel lid. You get with this kit, you did get two lids, but I'm going to use this pressure barrel lid. I'll have that on top as well. Give that a shake. And someone recommended to me a little good, a good idea. The taps on there already fitted on. I'll put that on, my, on uh, the other day. What I'll do as well, I'll turn that tap on and off just to run some beer through that as well some sterilized water through that sorry it runs from sterilized water through that to give that a clear out i'm going to take the tap off take the lid off put some vaseline around the seals make sure it's all properly sealed then i'm going to siphon i'll put that tube in there as well to get that done then i'm going to siphon the beer from the fermentation bucket into the barrel i've checked in the um fermentation cabinet that i've made the fridge and it looks like the beer's just sitting there now. There's no more bubbles popping up into the air valve, the airlock. The beer's just sitting there doing nothing, so I'm assuming it's ready to rock and roll. I, I started knocking it up on Friday last week, as far as the evening tonight, so um, it's about six days that's been going for, so they recommend four, five to six days. So that's about right already. I've not taken any hydrometer readings or anything like that, so I reckon that's ready to go. I know, just let um want to clear, clarify a few points first of all. This video is not an expert how to brew beer video. This video is just sort of like follow along with me making my uh, home brew. Um, if you want to watch these videos from beginning to end, grab yourself a kit, follow along, feel free. The next video will be pouring the beer out, having a pint, and then there'll be one video at the very end. And I've got some, it won't be a that long video, but it will be a video with uh, my mistakes. Because along the way I've noticed I've made a few little mistakes, nothing major. But... Um, I should tell you now, really, shouldn't I say you don't do the same thing, but nothing major, but I've made a few little bits and pieces wrong, I think. This video is not an expert tutorial on making beer and making a, using a homebrew kit. This video is for you guys to, or girls to follow on making beer with me. Um, I'm no expert by any means. As you've probably guessed if you watch the other videos. But um, I thought it'd be an idea to do this series of videos so you can make your beer at the same time as I'm making beer and then we'd have a bit of a laugh together and knock some beer out at the same time. It's not an expert tutorial, but um, I've got a feeling that when I do the next batch, I've been, if you've, there you go, there's the stuff I'm doing. I, I must admit, when I do the next batch, I feel a lot, lot more confident. I can't wait to make this beer, drink it. Hopefully it'll come out all right, touch wood. And then I can't wait to make the next lot because I just feel more confident already, really, because I, sort of, I was hesitating about this, hesitating about that, but you just got to crack on and get on with it, really. Make sure you wax some of this with warm water and everything, clear to get it clean. Vaseline around the seals, around the washers. Um, I did put too much water in my beer. Uh, one uh, nice subscriber mentioned that the other week, that I put too much water in my beer. I didn't add it up, I sort of, I added the two figures up and put too much on top, whatever. What I'm going to do when I transfer it, siphon it from the fermentation bucket into this uh, beer barrel, I'm just going to top the beer barrel up to near the top, and that'll be it. The rest I'm going to throw it away. That'll do me. And it's going to be a bit weak, this beer, but that'll do. We'll see how it comes out. Coming out nice and clear, I'm happy. Without further ado, let's go and put some warm water in this. Get this full up with water, shake, shake some water in that, and give it a little clean. And then um, I can start transferring it, which is the good bit, because I want to see what it looks like. Be back in a minute. Let's go. Let's go, Young's Sterilising Cleaner. Let's go and whack some of this puppy in, shall we? See how we get on. I'll be back in the tin. So I won't, bore, I won't bore you with the details, but I've been up to the house and I put some sanitising um, power, sanitisation powder, whatever you want to call it, and some warm water into the barrel. I've turned the tap on and off on the barrel, so it's gone through the tap. Shook it up and down a few times. Now I'm going to take off the pressure valve lid 
Oh, it's already got a dodgy rub in there, look. You can buy replacement seals, but um, I see it tucked that in properly. It wasn't tucked in properly. So I'm just going to smear some Vaseline on the, the seal there and uh, the tap. Yeah, let's take the tap off. I want to smear. Some Vaseline on the tap and then put them back in and that's ready to transfer the beer then that's the plan so I'll just smear some Vaseline on there this is what all the experts do apparently just smear it on the gives it an extra seal apparently so I'll just smear it on a seal in there I don't know if that makes much difference, I don't know. I've never heard of it before. You don't do this with plumbing, do you? Well, whatever, let's do what they say, eh? Put some on there. I don't know why you can't use like PTFE tape, plumber's tape or something like that, you know, instead of using bloody Vaseline. It's pot friendly, well, but um, right, that's on there. That's on there. Right, we'll just find something to wipe my hands. Luckily, we've done a bar, I've got a beer towel. One thing I have um, discovered is that I think in the future, there's the yeah, sterilizer and cleaner solution I've put in there. One thing I have discovered that if you're going to do this sort of thing, you do need like, uh, access to your outdoor tap, which I haven't got at the moment, all the rubbish down the side of the house. But what I might look into the future about getting some water down the side of the bar. Um, Run those blue pipes down the side from the from the tap to the outside of the hat to the uh, bar to get some water down there, water access, which I think will be handy anyway to have a tap down the back of the garden. Um, I've not done my uh, sugar solution. What I've done, I've put it in some warm water. I don't want to stir my beer up. Some people pour it and stir it all up. Some people just pour it on top. I'm just going to pour it on top like that. I've put, some people put sugar in and mix it up with a spoon, but then I've got a sanitizer to sterilize the spoon. Um, can't remember if it's 20 ounces there. Yeah, that should, that should give it a slight second fermentation apparently and help with um, create some more uh, gases, I think, CO2, help seal it, stop the, any bugs and germs on top of the beer. Now, I've got to take the beer out, that weighs a ton, fix it up on a stall behind us, try and siphon it. First things first, let's get the tap back on. Otherwise we will be in trouble and make sure it's turned off top tip tap back on make sure it's turned off find the old first she said I don't want to overshoot the mark, but oh, for fuck's sake. The key is to get this at the right angle so that when it does up, that is the right bugger to turn. You need to turn. You're gonna, if you've got one of these taps, you need to hold these two pieces here, hold that tap there, and that turns there, believe it or not. That's when a beer towel comes in handy. And they are tight. They're so tight, in fact, you... Oh, you wouldn't even believe they turn, but they do. Really shit design, I think. Ridiculous design, it's so tight. Oh. Oh. Well, I've moved it a bit. I'll probably cut that segment of the video. I want it to turn up in the right place. 
You want it to tie up and not so the thread. So that's about right there. Now how are you meant to turn that bloody round? Somehow they expect you to turn that round to the right place. It's just ridiculous. So that's got to be absolute shit design. If you do it too tight, it just strips the thread. There we go. Let's try holding that. Oh! Oh, fucking hell. Stupid, absolute shit. Homebrewers put up this. That's miles too tight, so what are you gonna do? God. Such a stupid jet. Homebrew is probably crap tap still. I don't know how they tolerate it. Let Johnny Boy get involved, I'll sort it out. God, he's it. Oh mate. Right. That's on there, let's hope that doesn't leak. Right, the tap's on there. So basically, if I can show you up close, it's a bit awkward to see. There's two pieces here. This actually rotates inside this, but it's really, really tight. But you want to get it, obviously, so your tap is facing downwards. So you've got to try and nip it up. You can't really do it in the barrel, it just strips the plastic thread. Absolute nightmare, I'm hoping that's not over tightened. Right, so make sure that's turned all the way off now. I've just noticed as well, what a crap design that is, look. Look at the length of that. Can you see that? Now you meant to go, you know, it's okay if you're born a poor pipe, if you want to get your pipe on there or some sort of pipe, which I want to do. I was looking today, so if anyone has got an, um, the vie top, the beer in a bag. I've got a vie top connector to go on a beer in a bag, but if anyone can find a tap for me for this size thread with a, like a vie top press tap, and then I can fit that straight on top of there. You know the beer in a bag that come with a vie top, the press button, then I can get the vie top connector on it. I, I'm gonna struggle to get a pipe on that, I think. Right, let's turn that off. Spin the camera, right, I'm gonna fill this up with some beer, I think. So I've put two tables up on top of each other and I'm going to get the beer that's heavy I'm going to try and lift it up onto here and then this one's going to go on the floor and I'm going to try and siphon it in I keep saying I'm going to try 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 because I've never done this before it's a learning curve a lot of palaver I'm looking forward to getting this beer in here and back in the fridge to be honest with you let's hope nothing leaks the tap's useless I think the setup's useless I might look in and get the corny keg thing after all to be quite honest with you a proper professional setup proper lids proper taps these are just plastic, the threads are useless. Right, let's grab the beer out of the fridge, see what we've got. Turn the old um, heater and that off. This is going to be heavy. That's heavy. It's making all sorts of wonderful noises. I'm looking forward to getting this up on the table. I think next time I do this, a little word of advice, don't do the 20, 40 pint, I do it less. Well, I didn't do 40 pints, I went over the top, but even too much, I put too much water in anyway, so I've made 45 pints. So 45 pints use plastic drums. It back is. It's not good. Uh, right. That's up there nice and safe. I haven't got a clue what's going on inside. As I say, I'm doing this live with you guys. Oh dear, got to take the lid off of me. I'm worried about this. 
let's bring the camera in close. I'm a bit nervous because I'm doing this live. I haven't seen what's going on in there. Should there be a head on it or not? Let's bring the camera in. You can have a look at the same time as me. We can both be let down together. <sighs> right, this is the great unveiling. I've never done this before, ever. I don't even know what it's meant to look like, to be honest with you. Was it meant to have a big head on it or not? Well, I don't know. I ain't got a clue if it's right or wrong. I don't think it looks right, but... Is it? There's not much froth on there. I haven't got a bloody clue. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Hmm. Smells beerish. Am I unveiling this to the public, to the subscribers and to the watchers of this channel? Live. And I don't even know. I'm sure you meant to have some sort of head on that. I can't touch it, can I? I was going to touch it. Um, I know it appears and disappears, appears and disappears. Maybe I left it in the too late. Doesn't matter, it's, it is what it is. I'm going to go straight into the... Um, so I went straight into this now. I have got sugar to add to do a second fermentation, so it don't look good, don't look drinkable to me. Let's put that pipe in there, shall we? Let's go. There we go, that was easy. Put the pipe right down the bottom so it doesn't oh bugger. They don't tell you that, do they? Right. Another little trick I've learned. It's got to be slightly higher. Through the table over. On the stall. It's not down low enough now. Right. Oh. 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 Oh, mate. Wood straight. That didn't taste too bad. I'm sure it's still going. It's working. You know what? Oh, oh did you? No, luckily you didn't see that. I think that's filling up. I don't want to sludge at the bottom, do I? Is it going? Yeah, it's running. Yeah, it's slowly going in. It's slowly filling up. There's no filter on it, so I'm not sure there's meant to be a filter. But that is running in. I'd rather have a filter on the end of this pipe, I must admit. I don't know if you watched that, you're lucky you never saw that, but I just... That was video gold, just had a mouthful of that stuff, with all the mank and everything. Oh, that weren't good. Well, I say it wasn't good, it actually tastes like beer. I've got a lot of sediment and crap on there, but on the top, but... 
It's looking all right, you know. Oh. Okay, a few things I've learned. I might have to get a, a siphon, siphon um, pipe with one of the pumps that you can get, you know. Because I didn't like doing that, and the height's wrong. I had this up high, really high, this beer, the fermentation barrel, the, the bucket, sorry, and then the barrel was really, really low, and then one wouldn't reach the other. That is filling up quick. The siphon works quite well. I'm just off the bottom. I'm just holding the pipe off the bottom. I don't get too much crud. Oh, the load went in. I'm sure this should have a filter on the end of it. A load of mank went in there then. It's looking all right. I don't know what the head, the head doesn't look like it's meant to look. I think I've wondered if I've left it a bit too long. I think I left it too long because of the fermentation um, container that I've made in the fridge. I think it ferments it um, quicker. That's my take on it. Anyway, I'm not an expert. Um, I know it takes four to six days, I think, when people do it indoors, like moving their buckets around left, right and centre. But because I've maintained a certain temperature, or almost perfect temperature, in the um, fermentation fridge that I've created... Because it creates, it's maintained a certain temperature, I'm just thinking, because it maintained a certain temperature, an almost perfect temperature, I think it fermented a bit quicker. I've got a feeling I should have done this a couple of days ago. I mean, as the head just settled, or I don't, I've got no, I'm making it up actually, I ain't got a bloody clue to be honest with you. All I know is, when I siphoned it a few times, I took a bloody great mouthful of it. And I'm picking up sediment off the, I'm trying to hold the pipe just off the surface of the bucket off the bottom surface of the bucket. But I don't want to hold it too high that it stops the siphon because I don't want to do that again. After three or four attempts of siphoning it, I don't want to... I hold the pipe quite low in this thing, so it's going quite near the top. Now it looks quite clear. Oh, oh some big lumps going there. Oh. Big, big lumps. That's because I put the pipe on it. It needs a filter on it. It needs a filter. There's horrible lumps going up here. So Mind you, do get sediment. Is that flowing? It definitely needs... It definitely needs a filter on the back end of this, surely. Is it still flowing out? No, it stopped. No, what's that? That can't be the bottom of the bucket, surely. Yeah, I've got to do it again. Oh, God. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I've got to... Oh, it's horrible. I don't want to do it. Here we go. Man up, Johnny boy. Bloody siphon, I hate bloody siphoning. It reminds me of the old days steam being petrol out of motors. I hate bloody siphoning. Oh god, what a stupid method. You need one with a little pump. Go on. Go on. Oh, it's because I'm lifting it up. See sod. Get the missus to do it really. Alright, here we go. If anyone local that wants to solve my beer. Come on, I'm getting fed up with this already. They make it look so easy on things you've got to get the heights right.
I might have to put the bucket down, I think. I might get one of those sizes with a little pump on it. This is a bloody joke, this is. Have I bored you yet? It needs a filter on the end of it, surely. Oh, I can't do it like this. Right, plan B. That's got to go lower. There's all stuff over me floor now. Some would call it beer. I don't know what I call it. Oh. Right, I'm going to go for it. Sod it. Right. Meant to hold it quite low into the beer, aren't you? But that's better. It's holding quite a bit. Fucking nightmare. You live and learn, don't you? Oh. I think. That'll do me. So I feel that quick. Come on, watch that. Might be too bloody much in there. Let's get that pipe in there. Ah. What a nightmare. What a job. Oh, you want to drink that? No wonder people get moaned at and get divorced over all this. Now that's too, I think that's like too much, or is it? Right, let's get some kitchen roll, I think I've got some kitchen roll here. Oh, that's heavy. Right, a little bit overfilled, I noticed there's a maximum mark there anyway, so I've gone up to the top, I shot outside, ran the tap a little bit and drained some out, and that gives me some room for expansion. I've had a little clear up now. I'm glad I've done it now because it's out of the way. But you live and learn. As I say, I've not done it before. A lot of people you see on YouTube have probably done it before. Um, the tap's not leaking, which is good. So, add me a bit of sugar, which I've added to some... Is that a good idea or not adding it to water? I'm not sure. No, not really. Yeah, I'll put the old sugar in. Is that a good idea using your finger? Not really. Too late like now, I forgot. <laughs> oh dear. I've been told though that directly sugar goes on. It starts a second fermentation process and it seals it all, etc, etc. That's the way you can use tap water with bits and pieces. We'll soon see, won't we, when I've finished it. Um, I'm going to put the lid on there, the pressure valve lid is going on. So the pressure valve lid is going on. Let's bring the camera in closer. So, a little sugar. Yeah, lubricate seal before use. That's going on now, the pressure valve, the release valve. I've got some Vaseline on that seal, that rubber seal. Tighten it up. I'm not going to go mad. I'm quite happy though, because if anything goes wrong, that does release the gases, I think, because I heard it when I was shaking up the, um, the sterilizer earlier, I could hear it going. Right, I'm going to whack that back in the fridge. Apparently 48, with well, this one, 40, wary, 48 hours warm, so I'll leave it at 20 for 48 hours. Friday after uh, Thursday evening, so that's Friday, Saturday, so Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, I can go on my um, ink bird. Now I've got the Wi-Fi one, I can just drop the temperature down, to chill it for a week, week and a half, whatever. Let it all settle down, start pouring a pint out, we'll see what we've got. If it comes out with a nice clear beer, we're laughing. Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm not sure what I'm going to get, to be honest with you. When I look open that lid, it's not what I expected to see. So let's get this, oh, it's a little bit lighter. That's what we've got now. The beer is in the barrel. Tap on there, there's no leaks. The heater's still there. The probe's just poked to the side on the left here. 
it's not really taking the temperature of the beer as such, it's taking the temperature of the internals of the fridge. I'm going to shut the fridge door now. Temperature set to 20. It's 18.4 at the moment, it'll start heating up in a minute. I'm going to leave that for 48 hours at 20 because you're meant to do a slight second fermentation, which hopefully that will do. Then I'm going to go on the app and I'm going to drop the temperature down, let it chill and cool. We, at the end of next week, say, so I'll um, have a look how it comes out. Right, it's dark outside now, it's getting late now. I'm down the bar. Um, what did I tell you? I told you this video, these videos are not a tutorial on how to brew beer. More like a comedy of errors, to be honest with you. Um, they're more real to life to, <laughs> because um, if I did that three or four times and I'll be able to do a lovely tutorial video like that and go bang, this is how you do it. But that's not what this was set out to be. This was set out to be like a real to life type video type of thing, you know, which it was. Uh, cock up some mistakes I made along the way. They're all sort of filmed live and they're not been cut out. Um, I had a mouthful of beer when I was doing a siphoning. I, it's, the heights were wrong. I, I've got it high enough to do the siphoning, but it was too high for the pipe to reach both ends properly. Without, I wanted to get the pipe just off the bottom of the bucket and just at the bottom of the barrel because you don't want it all. You want it at the bottom, just going nice and slow. So the heights were too wrong. Uh, the bucket was too high, or the barrel was too low, one or the other. So the siphoning wasn't working properly. So I'm not getting a bloody mouthful. Oh, nightmare. There's all yeasty mank stuff everywhere. But, but in actual fact, I know it sounds weird, but the bit of mouth I got, I tasted it and it wasn't poison. It wasn't too bad. So maybe after all this mucking around, we're going to get a nice beer out of it. Um, I'm going to grab myself a hobgoblin off the shelf. Even that's full up now. God, it's all going wrong tonight. Right. Hobgoblin off the shelf. I need that to calm myself down. It really needs, that siphon should really needs a filter on the end of it. I've, I've seen someone on the internet where there are filters on the end. And I've also seen ones where they have a little pump. You can pump it. I don't want to stick me, me in my mouth on the end. It's meant to be all sanitised and clean. Uh, and then I end up dipping my dipping finger in the bloody sugar. So let's hope that's not bugging it up. I have been told... Um, when you put the sugar in, it does a slight second fermentation. The CO2, etc., puts a slight gas to oh, no, it, seals it all. So, I'm hoping touch will haven't bugged anything up. We'll see. Um, I'm going to leave it for 48 hours, as I said earlier. I've got the temperature going on now. I'm going to leave it for 48 hours. I've got it set to 21, actually. I'm going to leave it for 48 hours on 21, 22. A bit warm, kick it in a little bit. Sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but apparently, it gives it a kickstart. Bit of sugar on top, kickstarts it, um, and we'll see what we've got. After 48 hours, I'll drop the temperature down to a bit, a bit cooler. I don't know, 15 or something. I don't know, and I'll leave it a week. And at the end of next week, I might. I think you meant to leave it a couple of weeks, but I think you leave it as long as you want. Then after that, but um, I might leave it a week. Sneak or sneak down next week, mid next week. Sneak down, have a little pour, slight pour, gentle pour. See what happens. I'm a bit gutted that. I saw a lot of sediment and, and mank going through one bucket to the, to the barrel. I wanted it to go through clear. I wasn't sure where I was holding the pipe. I didn't want to be too high up so it stopped the um, siphonage, if that's such a word. And I didn't want to be too low that it dragging up the dregs. But every now and again I was hitting the bottom, it was dragging up the dregs from the bottom. So I was a bit peed off about that. So I definitely need to look in that siphon, siphon method. Um, I know there's some on YouTube that siphon from one bucket into another bucket. Then into his bottles or his barrels. I can see why now. A bit of a palaver, but I can see why he's done that now. But uh, most people just go straight from the fermentation bucket to the to the bottles or the or the barrels. I think with homebrew that sediments part, part you get sediment in all sorts of brews, don't you? But um, I think homebrew sediments part part of the part of the um, uh, joy of it really. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. It's, it's getting to me. It's, it's, I'm hoping next batch will be. I will. I'm not going to give up. I'll make more. I will make more. And I'll get more experience at it. Experience at it. I need a water supply down the bar. Really, I need a water supply down here because I'm getting in and out of the kitchen and that, and there's mess everywhere and there's mess on the floor here now. It's like 
I liken it, I, I spoke to someone the other day and I, and I, I liken it to sort of when I had a fish tank, an aquarium fish tank. They're great to look at, great to watch, but it's, it's all the cleaning out and the palaver and all the mess in the water everywhere, you know? Homebrew so far, my, my homebrew experience so far has been a bit um, mess and wet and water everywhere. I've got all around my t shirt, all around my jeans, sticky sugar everywhere, you know, in the kitchen and that, you know? Might just, just go down the shop and buy a bottle of these, a bu box of these. Look, I'm mumbling on. I'm gonna go and sort this video out, I think, see if we're gonna publish it or not. It might be so bad, I might not publish it. Um, I'm hoping it'll come out all right, I don't know. But when I took that lid off, that was not what I expected to see. I expected to see all the, but maybe I've left it too long, I don't know. As I say, maybe when it's in a, a fermentation cabinet like that, it's set up, maybe you do it after four days. Maybe I should've done it midweek, but you haven't always got time when you're at work. Um, maybe I should've done it earlier. Does it make a difference? I don't know. There's a guy on uh, Facebook actually, who's on, on the member's Facebook page, and he's got a great setup. He's got a, he, in lockdown. He's got, got like a garage. I haven't got one, but he's got a garage at the side of his house, and he lifts his door up and he does all homebrew lined up. And, then, and he's got friends around coming around, popping around, have a drink and a chat. And I looked at that, I thought, you know, what a great idea. A, he's get his sociable with the lockdown situation, and he's giving his beers away for free. All coming around with a chat, trying different beers out. What a great idea. I can't remember the name of the place now. Uh, my somewhere in, S in um, Norfolk in, in the UK, and I thought, what a great idea! But also, because he's in his garage, it's, it doesn't matter about dirt and mess, mess on the floor and a bit of water getting spilled. That you know, I spilled beer on my floor here. I've got a sticky floor here, sticky floor there. I've got no cleaner. They're all furloughed. Right, I'm gonna take this beer up to the computer indoors. Um, trying to edit this video, see if we can make some something out of it. Probably one of the worst videos I've done. I'm tired, I've got in from work, I went to vote. I wanted to get this beer done. And then when I found out I sort of left it six days instead of four, and then when I opened that lid, don't know, I'm worried about it now. Um, doesn't matter, if I if it goes wrong, I'll just throw it all in the bloody bin and start again. I've got all the gear now. All the gear, no idea as usual, old Johnny boy. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna leave that bucket over there with all the mank and crap and I'm gonna wash that up at the weekend when I get a spare moment. You know, that's the sort of thing you don't wanna do. I'll leave that to another time. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, watch the Life of John channel. More videos coming soon. Not all about beer, not all about pubs. Might even go out fishing soon. Um, if you wanna have a little chat with us, want some post your videos or photographs of yourself or your bars or whatever you're doing, Pop onto the Facebook Life of John page and um, ask to be a member on there. And it depends on when you're watching this. Well, if I mention the drone competition, I'll put a link to the drone competition. Once that competition's finished, I'll uh, I'll stop it. Merchandise is available. Four ninety five a ticket for the drone at the moment. We've we've nearly sold them all, so hurry up. I'm looking forward to putting this video on the computer to see what hash I've made of this one, you know. It's the worst one I've done, I swear. I wasn't feeling it tonight, but I had to get the bloody beer done. I should have done it in the week. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's going to come out all right, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm, look I'm looking forward, actually, to having a rest this weekend. And then... A Mid next week, next week, just coming down and just pouring the pint. That's the glory of it all, isn't it? Once you've done all this mucking around, just pour that nice pint. Nice and clear. Hold up to light, nice and clear. My brother-in-law, Bazza, hi Bazza. He's got one of his pinter things, pinter machines or something. He's showing me some bottles of beer that he made. He sent me a photograph on Facebook. Actually, it's on the Life of John Facebook page. And they are as clear as you like. They're sitting in this conservatory shelf, and they are as clear as you like. Downside, it only makes 10 pints, I think. I think you just pour the ingredients in, shut the lid, put it in the fridge, it makes it, they look a nice beer. But 10 pints, you know, I think he's drank half most of them already. So this makes 40. Well, I've just made, well, I did make 40. Well, whatever, whatever. It's going to be watery anyway, so I put too much water in it. I'm a bit, man, I'm annoyed. I'm rambling on, I'm annoyed. Um, it's no good me saying bye bye and holding that up because that's, I've not brewed that, so you know. Tada, thank you for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. We'll open it up and have some beers. We'll drink some beers. 
And then the last video, so we've got a video coming which is going to be drinking the beers. I'm pouring it and drinking it. I want to try and connect it to the pump somehow, but I've looked at the pump, the tap. The tap doesn't look that the right side. If anybody too late know, if anyone knows the tap I can fit onto that with a longer nozzle, let me know. I don't know what thread that is. But I'd like a, a better tap. And one that I could put a Vitop connector on would be, if it's like push button and you can get this Vitop connector, that'd be great. But if not, a better tap. So I can get a Jubilee clip on it. That's thing so short, you can't get a Jubilee, Jubilee clip on that. It'd be right on the end of it, that wheel. I'm not happy about that. Because I want to pull it, ultimately pull it through the pump. So if anyone knows the tap that I can buy for that, or maybe I will go down the, the um, corner keg route. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, it's no good me going like that and going by because um, this is not what we're making. So I'll just go. Ta-da. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.